Hello everybody, and welcome to the launch of Majestic 13, the newest game from Uncle Adam and myself. We're really excited to bring you this asymmetrical, near-future skirmish war game. It has solo, co-op, and versus modes in it, where you and your friends fight a shadow war against aliens to defend the Earth. So, today I'm going to take you through a full bat rep of how to play Majestic 13. I've already got my team all rolled up and generated. We're going to go ahead and finish generating the mission. We're going to play through. We're going to see what happens. Can we defend the Earth? All right, let's start with what you need. Well, first of all, you need a play space. As you can see here, I've set up a space three feet by three feet. That's what we recommend as your game size, but of course you can set up smaller or larger depending on what you're doing. You need a book right here for reference, of course. You need a, you need a team. I've got my five-man team right over here ready to go. They're all set. You need an alien. Uh, you'll want a couple different figures to represent your aliens as they're varied if you can. Uh, and then sometimes during the narrative missions, you'll be attacked by equivalent numbers of aliens to your force, or sometimes larger or smaller. Most of the time, you're fighting one alien threat, and so you only need one alien enemy. You could technically run every mission with just the same figure, but I like to have lots of different aliens just to vary it up. Aliens can be any shape and size, anything you can imagine. You'll also need a couple of D20s. Today I'm going to use these very large D20s, so they're a little more visible on camera. And then you'll also need some D6s, as those are the two sizes of dice that the game uses. Now, my board has already been set up. I rolled and got a wilderness scenario. Uh, I already pre-generated and rolled all the terrain. But the uh, each mission itself, as you play, will take you through generating either an urban mission or a wilderness mission, and then terrain accordingly. So now I'm going to take you through the rest of the mission generation so we can see exactly what my brave team from the Agricultural League is up against here. All right, so we've already generated out the first two steps, which is the geography, this is a wilderness scenario, and the terrain. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, we've already determined difficult and dangerous. Now let's determine an enemy. To do that, we need to roll a d20 to determine which table we're going to use. Uh, 11, so we're going to use this table right here. And then we're going to roll a d6. 6, roll again. 4, uh, the Navite Warrior. So, we will be fighting a uh, Navite Warrior in this one. And you can see here he's on page 126. I then have to roll for my bureaucracy. Majestic 13 is a big, sprawling public-private partnership in bureaucracy is everywhere. To roll a bureaucracy, we roll 2d20. There we go. We add them together for a total of 21. Uh, no event. This time we managed to skate through and get lucky so the bureaucracy doesn't uh, cause any, any trip-ups to our mission. However, all sorts of things could happen here. The mission could be a trap. Uh, there could be additional alien monsters. I could have to re-roll elements. Uh, the monster could be stronger, could be weaker, all sorts of crazy things could happen. Finally, we need to generate a secondary objective. In this case, we'll roll a d6. Six, alien tissue collection. Uh, your team achieves this secondary objective if over the course of the mission, any members of your team move into or onto each piece of terrain the alien creature is occupying or had previously occupied. Basically, we're trying to follow the alien around and scrape the sides of the building to uh, collect any sample tissue from the alien. And then if I do so, uh, we'll get some bonus experience at the end of the mission. So, uh, very fun stuff there. One of the secondary objectives are meant to... They only require you to move in contact with things. They never require you to take actions. The actions you're doing in a game are fighting the alien monster. However, we want to represent that soldiers oftentimes do have, especially in sort of this kind of thing, they have sort of secondary things they're trying to pay attention to uh, and, and to, to act on, and so that's what these happen. So with that, let's move to setup, and we'll get going. All right, so setup. 
you begin by bisecting the board, and then you randomly determine which side is the player side. Uh, so in this case, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I'll be the player side. I'm going to cheat on that one a little, honestly, just so I can stand here where I'm filming <laughs> and use this. Normally you would randomly determine because secondary objectives might be scattered around the board and so on. So I begin setting up my team. I'm going to put my commander right here. We're going to put the medic right behind him. The heavy will be out here. And then Bill and Blinky will be hiding behind this building. You can set up your team anywhere you want on your half of the board. Then you randomly determine where the alien monster is going to set up. You Basically, the alien monster can set up in any piece of terrain on their half of the board. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that brings the Navite warrior over here into the woods. Uh, with that, we will jump to turn one. All right, so turn one. Uh, the first thing we have to do is determine if we have a FUBAR event. F fouled up beyond all recognition. FUBAR events are things that go wrong during the course of the mission. You roll a d6 plus the current turn number. If you get a 6 plus, something has gone wrong. So, we rolled a 5 plus 1, 6. Uh-oh, something has gone wrong right away. So, right out of the gate, we have a... FUBAR event. Something has happened. So we need to reference our table here, and we're going to roll a d20. Eight. Uh, terrain collapse. So, uh, randomly determine a single piece of non-scattered terrain on the board. That terrain collapses. All, in the, all models in the terrain or within three inches of that terrain, friendly and enemy, suffer 1d6 plus 2 damage. Oh boy. Okay, so what just collapsed? Let's go... One, two, three, four, five, six. One. The hill there, apparently you can see some screed. It collapses. However, my two guys here are both within three inches, so they're both going to take some damage. So Blinky uh, takes three damage, and Bill takes four. Okay. So they have been injured right out of the gate before it even starts. So it's rough. Hunting aliens. With the FUBAR event resolved, we only roll for that once during the game. Now we'll proceed to activations. Uh, so, oftentimes the alien will end up activating first. Activation is done by acuity. There are five stats in the game. Acuity, combat, dexterity, and fortitude. Uh, uh, as well as psionic. In this case, no one in this fight is psionic, so we don't have to worry about that. Most of the time, unless you have a psionic team member or are fighting a psionic enemy, there won't be that much psionic uh, things going on. Uh, figures activate from highest acuity to lowest acuity. Uh, alien monsters also activate multiple times in different ways, which we'll see. In this case, the Navite Warrior has an acuity of 17, which is interesting because uh, the... The highest acuity I have on my veteran commander is also 17. It's actually unusual to be able to even tie the alien monsters, especially earlier in the game. Uh, so, you then as the player can choose which way you want to activate. Uh, basically, do you want to go or do you want the alien to go? Uh, just to keep it simple, whenever, whenever you have a tied score with an alien, you choose the order of activation. I'm actually going to let the alien go first. Uh, because, well, I want him to go first. So we'll start with the Navite Warrior. Uh, this guy, aliens will always use their basic attack first. Uh, he is a Ravager-type monster, which means he's a ranged-type monster. He's going to want to engage at range. He's going to seek out cover. All There are three different monster types. Each has their own AI, and then each monster has certain actions they're going to try to take within the bounds of that AI. So... Um, this guy is pretty straightforward. Uh, he is a basically a very good shot. Um, he has like a built-in sort of organic weapon that he can use, and he's just going to try to crack that weapon off at someone. Uh, because it's his first activation and he's not near anyone, he's not going to need to move at this point. 
his everybody's range is just the board. Um, everybody's using high-powered weapons. These things are perfectly... You can hit anywhere. You don't ever have to measure range. However, I just need to determine who's closest for him to shoot at. Yep, it's going to be the heavy. Okay, so he's going to take a shot with his focus shot at the heavy, who has wisely set up in cover. So, the uh, Navite Warrior has a combat of 24. Very scary guy. And uh, basically he uh, needs to, because the enemy is in cover, he'll roll twice and select the lowest result. D20 plus his combat score, if it equals or exceeds the enemy's defense, it's a hit. So let's go ahead and take a shot here. Uh, so we're rolling twice. Nine is his low number. Plus 24 equals or exceeds the defense of 30 of the heavy. Big hit there from him. 3d6 plus 3 is his single target damage, equating to 12 damage on my heavy right out of the gate. Uh, a rough place to start for sure. Okay. But the heavy can take that. He's still around, and a medic is nearby. That then concludes the activation of the enemy, so now we're going to go to my commander. Uh, my commander, who's a veteran and a real hoss, uh, is, you know, he sees he's now, he let the enemy go first so he could side in on him. Now, he's also shooting back at someone in cover. So his combat is 19, aiming at a defense of 23. So he needs a four or more on the two dice, or on the lowest, sorry, of the two dice, which he succeeded. Big hit from the commander to start us off. Commander does 2d6 plus 5 damage. 11 damage on the Navite Warrior, bringing him down to 109 hit points remaining. Monsters have a lot of hit points. The alien monsters are tough. They're bigger. They're stronger. They're faster. In every way, they are superior to your people. However, your people have to work as a team and use their technology to overcome them. The commander didn't need to move, so he's good to go. That then brings us to the heavy who got shot. Uh, he has no way to realistically move to avoid uh, being uh, to avoid the cover, but he is going to get over here because one of the things that these ravagers do is try to seek out other cover. So by moving into a new location, uh, he can uh, prevent the alien from being able to easily occupy that cover. Um, he moves according to his dexterity, uh, which the heavy's dexterity is 10, so he had 10 inches of movement, more than easy for him to get over there into the woods. Okay. With him now being over there and having moved, he is going to go ahead and take a shot. The heavy's combat is 13. He also has to, aiming at a defense of 23, so he needs to get at least a 10 uh, on his low die. No, would have, could have been a critical hit, but you have to use the low die. That's a miss. That leads us to an interesting situation. Because the uh, this is an, a, a Ravager enemy, all alien monsters have some way that they'll activate again. In this case, Ravagers activate when they get missed by a ranged attack. So, the heavy missed, meaning that the... Uh, the alien monster now gets to activate again immediately after he's done and shoot back. So they're going to trade some fire here. Uh, but because he's firing at someone in cover, he also misses shooting back at the heavy on the four. Four plus 24 is 28. The heavy's defense is 30. Defense tends to be the only number where the player's uh, have an advantage, the humans have an advantage over the alien monsters because of all the advanced armor and things like that that they wear. So that is the alien's free activation. We then proceed on through the order. That brings us then to Bill. Uh, now Bill uh, is going to be a brave guy. He wants to flush the alien out of this cover and complete a secondary objective as well. So Bill has a dexterity of 13. So he's going to go ahead, sneak around there, and get real close to this alien. Try to flush him out of the woods. Brave move from Bill. Now, because of his position there, also in the cover, he won't take the penalty. So, uh, that bring, Bill has a combat of 13. 
And now he gets to roll normally, so 13 against defense 23, looking for a 10 plus. Big hit from Bill. 2d6 plus 1 damage is what his assault rifle does. 9 damage. Okay, very good. Uh, 9 damage, bringing the alien, uh, the warrior, down uh, to 100 hit points remaining. Okay. Unfortunately, right after Bill uh, is then the alien's third activation. So aliens activate at their acuity score and then their acuity score minus 10, uh, as well as then the special ways they can activate, but they never activate more than three times in a turn. Okay. Now, in this case, he has an enemy that's close to him, but it's occupying this with him. So it's going to seek out some new uh, place. It wants to move basically as far away from everybody as it can, and then use its attack. Uh, in this case, it has a special attack it used. So the warrior has a thing called Scattershot, uh, and his dexterity is 18. So he has to move around all of this. So he can't quite get over there, but he can get to see two people in range. So he's going to try to move uh, as I break the board. Okay. He's going to move over there. So he has two people in range of his scatter shot. When the Navite Warrior activates, if he did not uh, use his scatter shot during his last, act last activation, and there are at least two enemies within 18 inches, he will use that. Basically, instead of making a single check, he gets to make two. Pow, pow. Now, uh, in this case, he is in cover. He's not. So this is... First, we'll start over here on poor Blinky. Uh, this is a straight roll, 24. Uh, 24 plus 9, that's a hit. So Blinky, who was already damaged by the terrain collapse, uh, now takes 2d6 plus 2 damage. 11, oh boy. So uh, Blinky is down to 12 hit points remaining. Uh, and then over against uh, Bill, who is in cover. Let's so roll twice and take the lowest. Thankfully, he misses. However, the Scattershot has a secondary effect. When hit by it, the uh, uh, Blinky will have to make a Dexterity stat check at 20 or become blinded. There are four different conditions in the game. Uh, they're very simple. In this case, this monster can cause blinded, but they might blind or stun uh, or poison, those kinds of things. All of the conditions are meant to be debilitating and cause penalties, but not stop the figure from activating. And that's really important in our design. We want it to be something people wanted to get rid of, something that you can, you know, work toward, but it isn't something that completely shuts the figure off. To make a stat check to avoid a condition, I simply roll a d20 um, plus the stat. In this case, uh, Blinky's dexterity is 14, and I'm aiming at a target number of 20. So... Oh, he rolls in that one. Poor Blinky not only takes the damage, uh, but and, ha and but he's also blinded. So we're going to go ahead and mark that with a little marker there so we know he's blinded when he activates. Uh, Blinky is in a rough spot, and the medic is nowhere near him, so we'll have to see what he does. Okay, that then brings us to the medic's turn. Speaking of which, uh, the medic has a pretty low combat... Uh, but uh, he can still get himself out there. He knows he's got to get moving. Maybe he'll he'll get over here so he can start healing. Uh, boop. So hopefully next round he'll be able to heal uh, poor Blinky. And then he, so he'll move over there and pop a shot. He's got a straight line. Oh, big hitter from the medic on the 17. His combat is only 8. Uh, so he's 17 plus 8 is 25, aiming at a defense of 23. That's a hit from the medic, who still carries an assault rifle. I mean, look, let's be fair. Okay. Uh, seven damage, bringing the Navite Warrior down to 93. Great job, medic. And then lastly in our round, Blinky. He's only got one eye, hence why he's got such a low acuity. He activates, and he has a condition. When you activate, you may attempt to clear one condition on a model. Uh, in this case, he is blinded. To do that... You make the relevant stat check at a static uh, target number of 20. So we're going to... Uh, Blinky's dexterity is 14. 
So d20 plus 14, looking for 20. He rolls a 15 this time. He manages to get the goop or whatever happened out of his eyes, and he is no longer blinded. Meaning, though he's injured, he can, in fact, see the bad guy. Well, the first thing he's going to do is get the heck out of there, um, because he doesn't want any part of that. So he's going to move over here behind the medic. So hopefully he can get healed next round. And then he's going to take his own shots now that he's his eyes are clear. Uh, clear eyes, full heart can't lose. Here we go. Oh, big 17 uh, for a total of 31 with Blinky's combat, or sorry, 30 with his combat of 13. Another hit. But Snake Eyes on the damage. So three damage, a little grazing hit, bringing the Navite Warrior down to 88. L figures on the board have activated. The uh, alien has activated three times. That brings us to the end of turn one. All right, turn two. We don't have to make a foobar roll anymore because we got that during turn one. Uh, however, uh, we now go back into acuity order for activations. Remember, my commander is actually tied with the warrior, and in this case, he has a perfectly clear line of shot, line of sight right over to him. So as I said, when you get to choose who activates when you have a tied acuity, in this case, the commander, seeing the, the Navite warrior out in the open, is going to go ahead and pop his shot. The commander is combat 19, because he's an absolute monster, aiming at 23. That's a big hit right there. So 9 plus 19 certainly equals or exceeds 23. And his sniper rifle finds purchase. Uh, 7 plus 5, 12 damage, bringing the alien monster down to 76. Unfortunately, then, though, the alien monster does get to activate. Uh, so he used Scattershot during his last activation, so that then leads him to his third attack which is Restraining Shot. Targets the nearest enemy, uh, which is this guy right here. And a nor he doesn't... This is basically him firing off like a, a net or something like that to capture the person. Uh, and he... This... Uh, so which is my medic, who has foolishly wandered closest to the battle. Oh boy. Has to make a Dexterity stat check 24 or be restrained and take a bunch of damage. Okay. Let's take a shot. So the medic has a dexterity of 10 and he looks so he's aiming for a target number of 24. So he needs a 14. Oh, look at that. 19. The medic, just a rock star, dodges the net, isn't restrained and avoids the damage. However, uh, the he is going to now seek to get into cover. His dexterity is 18. He's occupying the nearest cover, so he's going to try to truck his way over here to this unoccupied space. Unfortunately, it's going to leave him out in the open for a turn while he tries to run for cover. Okay. That then brings us to the heavies activation, who, hey, is right here in the woods, waiting for this guy to show his face and wander out in the open. The heavy has a combat of 13 against a defense of 23. Oh, but unfortunately misses. And by missing, he allows him to activate again. A, a sad turn of events, to be sure. That brings us back to the top of this guy's activations. Uh, so he will use his focus shot again on the nearest enemy, uh, which is this guy right here. So once again, in cover... And thankfully, look at that. Bill is just a rock star. He's, he's using the trees to his advantages. But he is able to move and get himself into a better firing position there, hidden amongst the building. Okay. Well, the heavy let us down, but now we go to Bill's activation. Bill has proven himself pretty strong. He's doing well. He's over here. Uh, Bill is going to... Uh, let's see, he has a dexterity of 13. I doubt he can get all the way over to cover. He can't, but he's going to try to position himself to succeed next round, where he can get over there, and he's trying to follow and complete the secondary objective. So Bill moves over here, 
Bill has a combat of 13, aiming at a monster in cover with a defense of 23, so rolls twice and takes the lowest. Look at that, Bill with the big hitter. 10 is what he needed. Way to go, Bill. 2d6 plus 1. Uh, 6 more damage on to the warrior. Okay. With Bill's activation complete, we actually come to the third activation of this guy right here, uh, of our bad guy, of our Navite warrior. And this time he's going to go back to his scatter shot. He has his two enemies within 18 inches. So uh, he is firing with cover, but he's got a big bonus. So plus 24, rolling twice, taking the lowest against Bill. Uh, oh, just got him that time. Bill, he got a little overconfident in the trees. So Bill, 2d6 plus 2. Okay, Bill takes 7 damage. And he has to roll his dexterity. Uh, this is 20, stat check 20, or be blinded. Bill has a dexterity of 13. 7 plus 13 equals 20. He does manage to still avoid the blind condition. The heavy has a dexterity of 10 and fails. So the heavy is now blinded. Not a great day for him. Blinded in the woods, unable to see his foe. Okay, that brings us to the Medic. Now, the Medic has a very low combat and really isn't uh, set up for this. However, he is standing right next to Blinky, who is injured, so it's a good day for him. Uh, instead of taking his action to fight, he's just going to heal Blinky. Uh, so to do that, he, just, he has a Medic kit, and he's a good healer, so he rolls a D6. Whoa! He gets a D6 plus 5 on his healing he restores 11 hit points uh, back to Blinky, uh, bringing him back up to a much more comfortable 22 from his 11, bringing him out of death range. Way to go, Medic. Good job. Uh, that then brings us to our final activation of turn two, which is poor Blinky. Uh, Blinky doesn't really have much to do. He's got He could take a bad shot. Blinky has a combat of 13, but that means he'd need to roll a 10 on two dice. Instead, Blinky's going to try for something else. So one of the other things you can do, is, besides clearing conditions and healing people and moving and shooting and all of that, is you can do a thing called Call for Aid. Call for Aid represents phoning back to Majestic 13 headquarters to call for some kind of help in fighting this alien. You can never successfully call for aid more than once. However, you can attempt, to, to, you can attempt it any number of times until you're successful. To call for aid, you roll a d6 plus the current turn number. It's turn two. So basically, and we need to equal a six or more. Three plus two is five. Unsuccessful. And with that, that's our last activation. And we go to turn three. All right, turn three. So we once again choose this. This time my commander is going to let the alien go first. He might be sacrificing the heavy a little bit. He knows what he's doing. The alien monster is going to try to use his restraining shot to pin down this already weakened uh, heavy over here. This guy with his giant gun. He doesn't want to get hit by that. So now the heavy is blinded and he has to make a dexterity uh, stat check at 24 or be restrained. Oh my goodness. His dexterity is 10, 14, plus 10, 24. He actually gets it on the numbers. Unbelievable. And somehow, even though he is blinded, just happens to stumble the right way to avoid the net and the damage. Well, that could have been it for him. Uh, but hey, good stuff. And then the Navite Warrior is going to try to seek out uh, some kind of new cover. Okay, so he's going to go back this direction. So he'll, he's putting himself into some nice blocking line of sight against these two. Uh, but he does wander right into my commander's trap, who now has clear line of sight. My commander's going to go ahead and take his shot. Uh, big hitter there. Uh, no critical, because the monster's not under the effect of a condition. Uh, we'll talk about that when it comes up. And then 2d6 plus 5 damage. 9 plus 5, 14 bringing the 
uh, Navite Warrior down to 56 hit points. We're getting there. Uh, didn't miss, so that means the Heavy gets to go. Now the Heavy is going to attempt to clear his Blinded Condition. So he, at the start of his turn, will make a Dexterity stat check. He succeeds. We're doing really well at clearing conditions here. He gets rid of his Blinded. He can now see again. Good stuff. Uh, and then, hey, look at that. He wipes again the goop out of his eyes. And look at that. The monster is right in range. Let's see if he can turn it around this time. He can. Rolling a big 15 plus his combat of 13. Uh, he then gets to roll damage. Uh, 9, 11, 12 damage. Bringing the monster down to 44. We're getting close. That then leaves Bill. Uh, Bill, right here. Look at that. Uh, Bill is going to take a shot at, again, this monster out in the open. Bill has a combat of 13. Another big hit. Just this thing wandered out in the open, and everybody just punishes it for its foolishness. Only five damage, which is actually perfect. As, unfortunately, we've now hit a very dangerous place, as we'll see as the monster is about to activate. Bill, however, wants to keep completing the secondary objective, and so is going to jump over into this terrain where the monster had, a monster, the alien monster had occupied. That then brings us to the alien monster's second activation. Now, the alien monster is activating at 39 hit points remaining, which means it's in extremis. All alien monsters have some hit point number listed on their stat card that shows when they go in extremis. In extremis means they just frenzy out. They're, they're rampaging. Uh, and the goal here was to make sure that you see that these things are dangerous. It doesn't, this fight doesn't just drag on if you slowly moving or trying to hit them or something like that. It, we were getting rid of the long tail. In this case, when they activate, they take damage and then they get extra, an extra action. The Navite Warrior, however, is even more dangerous because when he activates, he takes double the damage as he just rends himself trying to freak out and, and push himself to do all the damage he can. He also, though, however, gets two extra actions. So this could spell some bad times for my team. He goes in Extremis at 40 hit points remaining, and right now he activates with 39. So the first thing that happens is he takes damage. In this case, you'd normally, most monsters would normally take 2d6. The Navite Warrior takes 4d6. So 5, 10. Takes 10 damage. And then he gets two extra actions on his turn. Uh-oh. So, this is not going to be a good day. The first thing he's going to do is move over here uh, onto uh, sort of that piece of, of uh, cover terrain. And then he is going to take his focus shot at the nearest guy. So, the medic has a defense of 30, plus 24, right out in the open. That's a big hit. Uh, fortunately, we rolled okay on the damage. 3d6... Uh, Plus three, so five, six, nine damage to my medic. Unfortunately, he still has two actions remaining because he's in extremis. Very dangerous time. So now he's going to scatter shot the two nearest people. So first the medic. Big hit there. Uh, for another eight damage to the medic. Uh-oh. Medic's getting wounded. And then poor uh, Blinky, who just got healed. Also defense 30, also a big hit. Six, eight damage back on uh, Blinky. Okay. Uh, and they both have to make their relevant stat checks to avoid the blinded condition. So we'll start with the medic, who does succeed on the 19. Way to go. And Blinky, who fails. Blinky is now blinded. Uh, the Navite Warrior will then use his last attack, which is the Restraining Shot. He's going to use that against the Medic with that little dexterity of 10. It's a rough place, needing a 24. Fails. Okay. The Medic gets restrained uh, and takes 3d6 damage. Uh-oh. 9 damage on the Medic. Uh-oh. Uh the Medic only has 3 hit points remaining. Oh no. Doctor, heal thyself. Uh, and that ends the in extremist turn of 
him. Rough time for sure. That then leads us to the medic's activation. The medic may attempt to clear his restrained condition. So, dexterity. Uh, he fails. So there's not much he's going to be able to do because restrained really inhibits his shot and he's bad at shooting anyways. So he is going to attempt to call for aid, uh, just as we did earlier. So here we go, medic. Big call for aid. It's turn three. There it is. Rolled the six. And he's going to use a call in a drone strike. A drone strike is... Uh, you know, calling back to base. He's got a single attack, plus 21 against the enemy for 5d6 plus 4 damage. There we go. Didn't roll a 1. The drone strike hits. Big damage. Let's see if that drone strike can bring it down. Whoa! 10, 20, 3, 27. Uh-oh. Two hit points remaining on the... Uh, on the, the, uh, Navite Warrior. The Drone Strike levels this thing, almost bringing it down. That then brings us to Blinky. Uh, Blinky's going to attempt to clear his condition. He succeeds. Blinky then has his potential final shot. Here we go. Oh, beep. I can knock over the figure, but he can successfully hit. And with only two hit points remaining, Blinky even with near minimum damage, brings the Navite Warrior down. We got there. No one died. We have lots of very injured people, but this time we were successful. We would then move to the post-game process, uh, wrapping up. If anybody died, you'd roll to see injuries, death. Um, if somebody dies, don't worry. The Majestic 13 cloning vats are always ready, and most of the time you get a pretty good facsimile of your previous uh, team member back out. You also, in the post-game process, can do things like requisition additional gear, continue to build out your base, and so on. So, in this case, we were successful against the, the Navite Warrior. This alien monster has been dispatched. Earth is just a little bit safer, uh, and the team is able to go home su successfully, uh, have a beer, and feel like it's a good day. There you go. As you can see, a lot of fun. I still got to do the post-game process for my for my team. Uh, this team really came out fantastic. I had a great time uh, fighting this Navi warrior today, and uh, I think we've shown that Earth will not go gently into that good night. Uh, this is our and all right. It's not our Independence Day. You get the point. Anyways, if you like it, don't forget all the links from Majestic 13 are down below to order everything you need. If you've got any questions about gameplay or anything I didn't cover, please drop those down in the comments. I am happy to answer them. Check out the website. Uh, there's also additional resources like your crew sheet and things like that there on the website, as well as recommended figures. As always, I thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoy the game. We'll see you next time.